My name is Ben Knowles from East Coast Yacht Sales and this is a continuation of a video series that we're doing to educate current, future, or potential future customers of East Coast Yacht Sales about these Axapar 28s and how they work. And in this video, I'll be describing everything you need to know about the holding tank system and the head on board a 28 Axopar. So please take a look at this video. And if you have any questions for us, feel free to reach out using the information below this video. So starting off uh, with getting our bearings on the head equipment, we'll hop into the head area and take a look at just these switches. Um, so when you're using the head, it is always a good idea to use a marine toilet paper um, and to limit uh, as much as toilet paper as you can, uh, just so you don't clog up the system. Uh, but when you're using it, you've got these, uh, the Jepsco has these really great um, uh, switches here, where this is, this is a momentary switch, and then this is a dual-sided momentary switch here. Um, and if you're looking at these icons, you can see that this is more of a traditional flush uh, button where it's adding water into the bowl and emptying the bowl at the same time. This is a uh, icon where this is just adding water into the bowl. And then this is just emptying the bowl. It's a good practice that once you're done um, using the toilet, you should uh, em leave the bowl empty. Uh, just so while you get underway, you don't have any excess water in the in the head. Um, and just so you can take a look at the operation, uh, this is pink because we're in full winterization mode. Um, so if I were to just press the empty the bowl button, you can see that it just does just that. If I can just add water into the bowl with this button here. And then if I do a traditional flush, that does, that does both um, emptying and adding water. And then again, if you're just finishing up the use, um, you just want to make sure that you leave the head with no excess water in there. Now, there is another gauge um, <clears throat> here above these switches which this is your holding tank level indicator. So this will give you a sense as to um, how full your holding tank is. Now, if you've looked at any other videos I've done on various different types and kinds of boats, you'll know that I inherently have trust issues with uh, gauges on boats. And uh, these gauges I also don't trust so much either. Um, and so what I like to do is I typically don't pay so much attention to, to this gauge because I don't trust it. Um, but what I do do is because the tanks are translucent, you can literally see the height of the holding tank right here. And even though this is filled with antifreeze, you can see right here uh, that's as, as full as the uh, tank is at this stage. This is the sensor that senses the holding tank level as well. Um, but uh, I find it uh, a sight gauge on anything is far more accurate than any sort of gauge. Um, so this is the best practice in my opinion. Um, just in general, this is a 12 gallon holding tank. You can see, uh, you'll see this on other parts of the Axopar. These, whenever you see these hoses, these are sanitation hoses. Um, so whenever you see these, you just assume that um, it's a part of the holding tank system on board the boat. Um, and when this tank does get full, there are two different ways that you can empty this tank depending on the circumstance. The first way and most common is through your deck uh, pump out. Uh, so uh, I always recommend if you're ever filling up your boat, it's a great practice to fill up the boat uh, with fuel, that is, uh, when you're filling with fuel, um, 
you should also plan to just empty your waste tank at that time as well. Uh, that's a good habit to be in. But when you remove this, there's a suction um, hose that gets connected on the dock and they will uh, suck out the, uh, the waste from the tank that way. The other way is through a macerator pump, but you can only do that when you're three miles uh, offshore or greater. And I'll show you where all that is. So once you remove the panel uh, under the sink and look under, you can see that there's all sorts of various hoses um, and fittings and through holes that can come across as a little confusing initially. Uh, this particular boat has the diesel heater, so this is some um, uh, air vent fittings for the diesel heater. Um, these clear hoses here, these are um, for associated with fresh water. Um, this pump right here is your fresh water pump. Um, and these white hoses, you may recognize those as the sanitation hoses. This particular hose we're looking at here um, goes up to the deck fitting for the pump out um, at the dock. Uh, but looking aft, you can see there's two red handles um, and it's easy to see which uh, valve is associated with the holding tank and would be associated with the overboard discharge which is the valve uh, with attached to the white hose. Um, you can also see that there's a metal clip as well with a hole drilled in the handle. Um, this hole and clip is meant so you can Put a lock on the handle. Um, the U.S. Coast Guard likes to see this uh, this locked in in position. So in order to uh, open up this handle, you need to move that clip, and that enables you to then open up the seacock. Uh, now with the seacock open, you can uh, go ahead and turn on the uh, macerator pump, and the macerator pump switch is located right here that switch right here um, so when you press this switch you're going to hear a pump go and you need to press and hold that switch okay um, and as you're pressing and holding that switch you're listening to the pump and you're you're pressing that switch if it's a full holding tank for almost up to a minute and you're you're listening to that pump for the RPMs to come up, you'll hear the RPMs come up, the pitch will rise a little bit, and that's when you know that you've emptied the holding tank. Now, uh, once you've successfully emptied the holding tank, you have to go back to this valve, make sure that this metal clip is out of the way, close it, close that metal clip, and the US Coast Guard is gonna want to see you uh, lock that valve. This will conclude how the head system works on an Axopar 28. If you have any questions for us, please feel free to reach out to us using the information below this video.